Good evening and Jai Hind children. I welcome you all in today's live class of biology. Children, today I am going to revise the chapter reproduction in plants. All right. So the different topics which are given here in the chapter, one by one, we will discuss them. Children, you must know that all living things which ultimately die, and before they die. Many of them produce young ones of their own kind, is it? And this process of producing young ones of their own kind is known as reproduction. And it is because of reproduction that life continues from generation to generation. Okay? All the systems of living organism which we described so far are essential for life such as digestive system circulatory system nervous system etc if one of them were to stop walking the organism would die but the reproductive system is not needed for the organism to stay alive however without it the organism cannot continue its species Okay, so you already have studied in your previous class that the flowers perform the function of reproduction in plants and the flowers change into fruits which have seeds in them and these seeds germinate to produce new plants. So we can say that the flowers are the reproductive part of a plant and the other parts of the plant, for example roots, stems and leaves. They are known as vegetative parts of the plant. Okay, so there are two parts in plant. Vegetative part and reproductive part. Vegetative parts include them. Roots, leaves, whereas the reproductive part includes plant. All right. But the plant do not only reproduce from flowers, they reproduce in several other ways also. For example, some new plants are produced by bulbs, leaves, or tubers. In yeast, the bud grows out of the body of the parent organism. Okay? So, we can say that there are two main methods of reproduction. And these two main methods are sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So these are the two main methods of reproduction, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, only one parent is needed and resulting in offsprings that are exact copies of the parent. And in plants, this asexual reproduction occurs without the seeds. Right. And in sexual reproduction, the two parents that one male and one female are involved and the offsprings are not exact copies of either parent. Okay, and in plants, the sexual reproduction occurs by the formation of seeds. Okay, so we will discuss in detail about these two methods of reproduction in plants. Okay, then? so first of all, asexual reproduction in plants we will discuss.
there are many forms of asexual reproduction in plants and some of the forms of asexual reproduction are that first one is fragmentation all right the first form of asexual reproduction in plant is fragmentation in this fragmentation method the body of the parent breaks into distinct pieces and each of which can produce an offspring and in the slimy green algae that you see growing in stagnant water their reproduction occurs by the process of fragmentation okay now the second b is budding in budding process a bulb like projection which is called bud occurs on the body of the parent organism and this bud grows into an offspring and many they eventually breaks away from the parents okay and they form the new organism yeast they reproduces by budding method okay in yeast a little cytoplasm that accumulates at one end of the cell and a bud is formed and the nucleus divides into two and one of them enters the bud and the bud grows and eventually gets detached from the parent cell to form new cell and this process continues and a large number of yeast cells are produced in a short time okay if the supply of nutrition is enough the bud formation occurs rapidly to form a chain of yeast cells in corals and sponges the buds do not separate out but remain attached to the parent organism and they grow to full size and reproduce again and again producing a colony okay so this is the budding method of asexual reproduction now the third method is spore formation children some non green flowering plants some non flowering plants you can say that in which flowers not appear such as mosses ferns and molds in such non green non flowering plants they reproduce by spore formation and a spore is a tiny spherical unicellular body which are protected by a thick wall the spore grows into a new plant when conditions are favorable like bread mold that can often be seen growing on moist stale bread that grows when spores settle on the bread all right so this spore formation occurs in some non flowering plants get it so the example of the fragmentation that occurs mainly in algae budding yeast and spore formation in such kind of plants get it now these all are the different asexual method of reproduction now children there is vegetative reproduction also takes place which is a part of asexual reproduction and in this vegetative reproduction the formation of the offsprings occurs from vegetative parts that is why it's known as vegetative reproduction so when new plants are produced from the vegetative parts of the mother plant such as roots stems or leaves without the help of any reproductive organs so it is known as vegetative reproduction and many plants like cacti and the strawberry 
they reproduce by vegetative reproduction method okay so the vegetative reproduction in some plants i'm going to discuss okay so first of the example is in some plants such as potato they reproduce through stem tubers okay so the potato plant reproduce by vegetative reproduction method and they form the stem tubers a stem tuber is a solid part of the stem that stores food underground and a potato has small buds on its surface which is called eyes and each bud can grow into a new plant okay so this is one of the example of vegetative reproduction in which new plant grows from stem tubers now the another example is yes the new plants also produced by parts of underground stem in ginger and forms bulb in onions so underground stem found in ginger and that bulb in onion okay so this underground stem of ginger and the bulb in onions they produce the new plants lily and tulip also reproduce by the same way that formation of the bulb so in onion lily and tulip okay children the bulbs are underground stem with thick leaves okay and these bulbs are responsible to form the new plants now in some plants such as strawberry and grasses the main plant develops side shoots which have buds and that grows into new plants okay so the another one is yes like strawberry and grasses the main plant develops side shoots so side shoots are responsible to form the buds and the example is yes strawberry and grasses all right children now in some plants the new plants are also obtained from leaves roots and shoots of some plants and the leaf of the bryophyllum plant has many buds on its margin and these buds give rise to new plant all right the sweet potato plant is grown by cutting its swollen roots into parts and planting them in the soil and just like that in money plant the new plants get grows from shoot of the parent plant get it so these are some methods of yes vegetative reproduction that occurs in different plants all right children now in gladiolus plant the gladiolus which is a flowering plant the stems are short and swollen with stored food and they are called corms and can separate from each other to form a new plant all right so you must have to know the names like in bryophyllum plant leaves form the buds on its margin and give rise the new plants all right and in the other plant that is gladiolus plant the 
these plants yes cones are formed from the stem part all right so the stems are short and swollen and they store food and these solid stems are called cones actually these cones are solid stem okay and they forms the new plants in some other plants the cells of only a specific tissues can divide and therefore the growth occurs only at places where such a tissue is present and this is called meristematic tissue all right children what such tissues are called meristematic tissues the parts of the plant that give rise to new plants they contain meristematic tissues okay now these are some vegetative methods of reproduction of asexual reproduction now some artificial methods are also there of vegetative reproduction get it so come to the artificial method of vegetative reproduction artificial methods of vegetative reproduction children in these methods the vegetative reproduction take place plus artificially all right so this vegetative reproduction has several advantages and therefore several artificial methods has been developed for vegetative reproduction and these are commonly used to grow many plants from one plant and the process of growing new plants by artificial method is known as artificial propagation all right what such methods are known as artificial propagation so some of the artificial propagation methods now i'm going to discuss one by one and the first one is grafting okay in this method which is used commonly in horticulture to develop new varieties of fruit plants and it consists of keeping a twig or bud of one plant which is called Yes, which is called sion over the cut stem of another plant, and that is called stalk. And both of them tie up together. So the stalk should have an extensive root system under the soil, and the tissue of the stalk and sion join together to form one plant. All right, and the stalk supplies essential nutrients to the sion also. and this method helps to develop new varieties by combining the features of two plants for example a high yielding variety may be grafted to a disease resistant variety to develop a new variety with both characteristics and many new varieties of mangoes have been developed by this method okay so grafting is one of the artificial method of vegetative reproduction or you can say that artificial propagation all right now the second one is cutting in this method a healthy young branch of a plant having a leaf bud is cut off and planted in moist soil and the cutting develops roots and grows into a new plant okay and this method is used to propagate plants like rose bougainvillea and sugarcane get it 
So the grafting method is mainly used to propagate, yes, the fruit plants. Such as mangoes. And the cutting method mainly for flowering plants like rose, jasmine. All right, children. So, in this cutting method, the plants that grows in short period of time and it allows many new plants to be produced from a single plant without waiting for flowers and seed. Okay. The third method is layering. And in layering method, the young branch is bent towards the ground and covered with moist soil. And after some time, the roots develop from the covered part and this is called a layer. The branch can now be cut and made to grow into a new plant. And this method is called layering and is commonly used by gardeners to develop plants such as jasmine, rose and bougainvillea. Jasmine, rose and bougainvillea also which is a flowering plant. All right. So these are some common artificial method of propagation. There is one more method of artificial propagation and that is known as tissue culture. In tissue culture, a piece of tissue is cut off from the growing tip of a plant and the cells are separated and kept in a nutrient medium. Okay, and under the controlled conditions, the nutrient medium which contains hormones that make the cells divide and forms group of cells. Roots also develop and these are then kept in different nutrient medium which containing the hormones that enable shoot to develop and the different plantlets can now be grown in pots of soil and the example of the plants such as chrysanthemum, orchids, asparagus and many other plants they are grown by this method. All right children, so the tissue culture method is also an artificial propagation. These all vegetative reproduction methods which I have discussed, they have certain advantages. Like the first one is it allows them to produce new plants quickly and using the plant parts takes less time than waiting for seeds to grow. For example, the fruit plants grown by this method start, yes, bearing fruits much earlier than the plants which grown from seeds. Okay, so this is one of the advantages. The second advantage is that plants reproduced by this method are exact copies of the parent plant and they have no variation. So this is also an advantage for plants growers as they can produce exact copy of a plant with the required characteristics such as resistance to disease. And all the plants which they produce will have the same characteristics. Okay? Now, the third advantage is the plants propagated vegetatively usually needs less attention than the plants grown from seeds in the early stages of growth. And the other advantage is the new varieties of the plants having required characteristics can be developed by this method. Okay, so these all are the different advantages and many fruit, fruits and the ornamental plants such as banana, pineapple, rose, sugarcane, etc. They are normally grown by vegetative reproduction and some plants do not produce seeds 
they can only be propagated vegetatively like banana and pineapple all right so these are some of the advantages of vegetative reproduction now this method have some disadvantages also and one of the disadvantages is that all plants have the undesirable characteristics of the parent plant second one all the plants are vulnerable to the same disease in a population of plants produced by seed and the plants have variations and therefore only a part of the population may get affected by a specific disease all right and the third advantage disadvantage is that the germs can get passed from parents to offspring which does not happens in plants produced by seed okay so these are yes some of the disadvantages of vegetative reproduction all right children now come to the next method of reproduction that is sexual reproduction children in most animals and plants they reproduce sexually for example yes for sexual reproduction to occur two parents that is one male and other female are required and each parent produces one reproductive cell or gametes the male parent produces the male gamete that is known as sperm and the female parent produces the egg cell which is also known as ovum and when the male cell and the egg cell they fuse together they form a third cell known as the zygote okay so this process of fusion of the male cell and the egg cell is called fertilization and the zygote is the first cell of the new organism and it develops into a new organism over a period of time all right so we will discuss in detail about the sexual reproduction in plants so in flowering plants that flowers are the reproductive organs and some flowers like rose and sweet pea they contain both male reproductive organ and female reproductive organ all right and they are therefore called hermaphrodites or they are also known as complete flowers are bisexual flowers okay so hermaphrodite or complete flower or bisexual all right it means that the flowers which contains both male and female reproductive organs so they are all hermaphrodites are by complete flowers are bisexual this complete flowers have stamens pistils petals and sepals in flower okay and the other flowers like corn and papaya they contain only male or the female reproductive organs so they are called incomplete or unisexual flowers so there are two kind of flowers complete flowers and second one is incomplete for our bisexual flower and unisexual flower complete flowers means the flowers which contains both male and female reproductive organs whereas the incomplete flowers are those which contains only male or the female reproductive 
or get it stamens they produce pollen grains which contains the male reproductive cells and these are surrounded by a tough protective coat which saves them from drying out and the ovules which are present in the ovary in the lower part of the pistil they contains the female egg cell all right so the structure i am going to draw now of a complete flower and the structure is So this one is the structure of a complete flower. All right, children. So these are the different parts of a complete flower. Then you can see this colorful part is termed as petal, and at the base a green structure is there, green leafy structure is there that is known as sepals. All right. In the center there is a swollen part that is known as stigma. It has the tube-like structure which is called style, and at the base it has a solid structure. that is ovary inside the ovary it contains ovule and these all together stigma style ovary and ovule is known as carpel or it is the female reproductive organ of anther and the filament they both together known as stamen and these are the male reproductive organs of the plant get it so the different steps which takes place in sexual reproduction of a flower and the first step is pollination for fertilization to occur the pollen grains must first be transferred from the stamen to the stigma of the pistil and the process of transference of pollen grains from the anthers to the stigma is called pollination all right and the pollen grains are carried to the stigma of either the same flower 
that is known as self pollination or of a different flower of the same kind that is known as cross pollination and most often it occurs with the help of wind water and insects all right so these are the three different agents which play an important role in the pollination so in insect pollination the insects birds and other animals they help in cross pollination of the flowers and the insects are attracted by the color and the scent of the petals they collect nectar from flowers and the nectar is a sweet liquid which usually present at the base of flowers so the pollen grains from the anther stick to the insect's body and the grains get rubbed off when the insect visits the other flowers or to collect nectar all right in wind pollination that wind helps in transferring pollen grains from one flower to the stigma of other flower and this happens mostly in the plants which have flowers with small petals or with no petals at all and they do not produce nectar also all right so in the absence of large petals the anthers at the pistils remains exposed to the wind and making wind pollination easier and the example corn wheat and the grasses they all depend on wind pollination all right now the second step is fertilization in fertilization the stigma of each plant secretes a liquid which contains sugar and the pollen grains respond to this liquid and start growing however the pollen grains start growing only if the liquid is produced by a flower of its own species and they do not grow if they land on the stigma of a flower of different species all right and after the pollination a thin tube which is called the pollen tube grows down from the pollen grain to the pistil and the pollen tube carries the male cell it grows until it reaches the ovule and enters in it and the male cell moves into the ovule and fuses with the egg cell to form the zygote all right so after the fertilization the next step is seed formation okay after the formation of the zygote the petals sepals and the stamens they wither away and fall off and often the style and the stigma also fall off and only the ovary remains and the ovules in the ovary they contain the supply of food and the zygote takes this food and begins to grow by cell division in some time it becomes an embryo and meanwhile the wall of the ovule develops hard layers and forms the seed and thus the seed consists of a young plant with stored food which is sealed within a hard layer okay so after the formation of seed fruit formation happens as the seeds form the ovary begins to swell in time it becomes a fruit so a fruit is actually a developed ovary all right and some fruits such as mangoes and apples are sweet and juicy and some fruits such as almonds and walnuts are hard and a fruit can have one or more seeds inside it all right children so these are the different steps which involve in asexual reproduction in plants okay thank you and have a nice day